Hey y'all, this is Christy and I'm back to talk about another aspect of homeschooling and that is the budget. Every homeschooler has a homeschooling budget, whether they realize it or not, and you need one as well. If you plan on homeschooling, then that's the first thing you need to do is to figure out how much you have to put towards education. So you're gonna look at your household budget and see what do we have that we can put towards curriculum, co-ops, et cetera. See what that number is and see what you're working with. And that number is gonna be different for every family. It can be zero all the way to unlimited. That's okay. No matter what your number is, it's okay. First of all, I want to tell you that you are the most qualified person to teach your child. You are. Even if you don't have a teaching certification, even if you don't have any experience in education or, or in teaching, it's okay. You're the best one for the job because you're the mama, because you're the parent, because you care the most. You are most invested in the outcome and you love them the most, okay? Now, the first resource I'm gonna talk about is called Teachers Pay Teachers. And this is not specifically a homeschooling resource. This is for any teacher. And, they, and the teachers, they will post their products on, on this website. And some of them are offered for free. It'll be a PDF that you can download for free, or a lot of them are just a couple of dollars, very inexpensive, where you download it and you print out your own worksheets. So that's an excellent resource that you can find great, great information for little to no cost. The library is your best friend. If you don't have Wi-Fi at home, check your local library. Mine has free Wi-Fi. Um, you can check out books, of course. You can check out tons of resources at the library. You can absolutely homeschool your child completely with resources from your local library, I promise every subject is available. Now, this may require more time on your part to research what resources your library has available and what resources are available at other libraries that they can send to your local branch. It may just take a couple of days or maybe a week for them to send what you need to your branch. I do that all of the time. I go look online and see, oh, my branch doesn't have that book, but another branch across town does. So I make a request and then they let me know when that book is at our local library so I don't have to spend my afternoon going all around town and collecting all of these books. So the library will do that for you and it's fantastic. Use that. Okay, what else does the library have? Speak to your director. I promise most cases there might be one that, you know, you have a dud or something, I don't know. But most cases your library director is absolutely willing to help you in any way they can. They're usually pretty nice people. So go talk to them. They may have ideas that I don't even know about or you hadn't thought about yet that they know of resources there at their library that they're happy to help their patrons with. So talk to your library director and they will be a wealth of information. My local library has recently started um, hobby boxes where they have juggling balls and a book on juggling and maybe that's all in that box. But one of them has a ukulele with a book on how to start ukulele lessons. Um, I think one of the boxes was crochet, had all the yarn and all the stuff that you needed to get started right away with instructions as well. What a fantastic thing to have at the library just to check out to see if it's a hobby that you like and uh, wanna try something out. The kids loved these. Are there any classes or clubs available? My local library for a period of time would offer, I think it was once a month, but they would offer art classes at our library. And I know this because I taught some of them. So uh, my kids would sign up for Saturday morning. They would go do their art class at the library, completely free. How great is that? Not counting all of the wonderful information inside the building of the library, they will likely have a website and this has tons of more resources available for you. Okay, so typically you're going to log in to your, to your you're gonna log into your library website page using your library card number is how it works for hours. So you might wanna have that nearby. 
check it out. Um, you can check out digital books. I think the app that we use is Libby or Hoopla, where you can check out digital books or audio books from your library right there at home. You don't even have to leave. Um, I think a nearby library offers access to the great courses. Let me see my notes. Is that what it's called? The great courses. I think so. Let me double check. I'll leave a link if that's the case. I don't know if that'll help you if you're not local. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'll check it out. I'll look into it again. And if it's a helpful link, then I'll leave it below. You can homeschool simply by using books that you check out from the library. And yes, even math, I promise. And that's not to mention my kids' favorite section of the library, which is the movies. Now, they like the movies for entertainment. I like the documentary side of the movies, and we usually each get a couple so everybody's happy over the weekend. So check out your library, use all of the resources. They're happy to help you find what you need. Use that. Another resource that I use often as a homeschooling mama is YouTube. What can you not learn on YouTube? I have learned how to cut my husband's hair on YouTube. Now, I am no professional, but it is shorter, so there's that. Um, anything, anything that you're struggling with. If your student is struggling with something and you're having trouble explaining it to them, like maybe the new math that's come around, look up a YouTube video. I promise you will find many videos which can help you both you and your student figure it out together, okay? Last year, my girls took a marine biology class and we learned a lot from YouTube with extra videos that were really, really fascinating. I really enjoyed sitting down and watching them with, um, with them because there was a lot of things that I didn't know. It was just really cool. So that was fun. You can always supplement with YouTube. Um, I would dare to say maybe history maybe science, you could almost do completely on YouTube. What I did last year when we did the marine biology, I made a playlist. And so we would just go through whatever subject, whatever uh, chapter we were working on. Okay. Free samples. Who doesn't like a free sample? Has anybody been to uh, Sam's or Costco and they give out the free samples? Everybody loves it. Many companies, uh, printed materials will also have free samples. Um, sometimes it's a printed sample, sometimes it's an online sample where before you invest, um, even if it's inexpensive or if it's, you know, a considerable investment, that you can try it out and see, does this work for my family or is this something that's going to wind up on the shelf where I'm going to have to resell it or get rid of it and throw it away later. So try those free samples. Um, that might give you a good indication of, is this a good fit for our family or not? Is this a good use of our funds or maybe not? We need to look into something else, okay? So use that. Check with your friends. Check with your friends for referral codes and coupon codes. A lot of times it will save you money and them money as well. If you use their referral code, maybe they get a certain percentage back or so many points or so many dollars in their account and you also get the savings as well. There's a lot of companies that like to work on referral basis like that and word of mouth, they rely on it. And so they reward their, their customers for spreading the word and advertising for them, basically. Okay, Pinterest. We can just spend all day on Pinterest, right? Now, Pinterest can be a little bit dangerous. Let me tell you why. You may look at these beautiful pictures, these beautiful images, which Pinterest is known for, and they have these fantastic curriculum, color-coded, sorted, beautiful school rooms, and everything is organized and clean. That can be dangerous. The fear, not the fear, what do you call it? The uh, danger of comparison. Don't fall into that trap. You're doing a great job. And it doesn't have to look like HGTV walked into your schoolroom. You don't even need a schoolroom. You can do it in your kitchen. You can do it on your couch. You can do this, I promise. So Pinterest is good 
use it for what it is for ideas and for links and resources, but don't get caught up in my homeschool has to look like that homeschool. Don't get caught up in the comparison trap, okay? Don't do that. Join homeschool groups on Facebook, probably on Instagram too. I'm on Instagram, I just, I don't use it. And I keep trying to go back to, but it's just, it's not a platform that, that comes naturally to me. Facebook groups uh, for homeschoolers, you will find lots of information there. You may find free resources. You may find someone willing to trade curriculums. Research free or homeschool days for local museums or places to visit in your area. A lot of times they'll have a Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock is their homeschool day or it's their free day when they're traffic is lowest and so they're trying to get some warm bodies in the building or on the site and you'll be able to take field trips for little to no money as well just by checking out if they have a homeschool day or if they have maybe a free day. A lot of, uh, a lot of our museums in town, they have a free day like once a month. So that's a great day to go. Board games. We have played Monopoly and called it school. There was counting, there was money, change that was being given, uh, real estate, there was a real estate lesson. What else? Reading, we were reading the cards. This is when my kids were little and we just needed a break. But board games are awesome and they are educational. And get outside, go for a hike, go explore, take a nature walk, take a notebook with you and jot down things that you find interesting or uh, things that you wanna learn more about or things you wanna research later. Just getting outside and getting some fresh air can do a world of good for both you and your students. Now, free is easy up until about fourth grade. You learn the basics, you learn math, you learn the addition, subtraction, a little bit multiplication, um, division, homemade flashcards are easy to make print free math worksheets, download free printables for math drills or um, use counters. There's lots of things that you can do that are free. ELA, phonics, sight words, penmanship, all this you can find free printables online. You can make up yourself if you're just a little bit creative, you can do this. And history and science, don't stress, do what's fun. Just exposure at this point in the game is what you want to accomplish, okay? Okay, if you are new to homeschooling and you are trying to figure out what curriculum to use or to purchase for your students, I would say go slow. Um, don't jump into an expensive shiny box curriculum. You may be disappointed and it may be a waste of your money. So what I would say is figure out what's the most important thing to your students. Um, for me and my family, that's math. And I would figure out what do we need in our math curriculum and then kind of fill in the rest because when they were little, science wasn't as important as those math foundations. And maybe history wasn't as important as language arts and getting those sight words. So what's the most important for your child's age? Start there and then fill in the rest. Check Facebook Marketplace. There's lots of used curriculum being sold online and they also have many different groups like we used to use BJU for Bob Jones um, Distance Online Learning. There was an entire Facebook group that sold used Bob Jones curricula and materials, maybe the teacher's guide or a workbook that wasn't used or a reader, and you could get it at a fraction of the cost. So check out those specific Facebook groups that I think Abeka has one, Apologia. There's a lot of the popular curriculums that you can find a used Facebook group that's selling just that curriculum. So it's easy to search within there. Take lots of field trips. Hands-on learning is the best, especially for those littles. Now, one other tip, if you have littles, and you can afford it in your budget. I don't think it costs more than maybe $20. You can find it at Walmart or on Amazon. 
invest in a laminator. It's so much fun. You use those hands-on tools so so often that they bend and you know they have the heavy cardstock and they use it and it gets raggedy edges. Most of the stuff I laminated, I didn't really need to laminate it for heavy use. There were some items that went all through three of my kids and thank goodness it was laminated because it never would have made it. But really it's just fun to do. It was like my hobby. My The first year that I had my laminator, my husband had to look out. I was gonna laminate our laundry. Like it was just so fun. Maybe that's just me, but try it, check it. If you have older kids and you have a limited budget and are your kids struggling in one particular area, should you invest in a tutor? Um, start online at those free resources like Khan Academy for math, YouTube, of course, like I mentioned earlier. See if you can't get by with those, but if you need to, absolutely, a tutor is a good investment. Check into a high school student maybe, or even a middle school student that is really excelling in that area and wants to make a few bucks, and that works out for you and for them. Do you have an unlimited budget? You just have money piles around in your living room and you don't know what to do with it. You call me, I'll help you. I'm just kidding. Um, my advice is pretty much the same for a very limited budget. Pick out what's important for your students, what subject is most important for them to learn, and what subject do they struggle with the most. So look at those two items and then go from there and fill in from there. How do they learn? Do they learn best online? Do they learn best um, with you sitting next to them? Do they learn best in a spiral or a mastery approach? These are all things that you're going to figure out through your journey of homeschooling, and it's gonna make it easier for you to pick and choose what to use in your classroom at home. If you have an older student and you have a limited budget, um, even if you don't, if your child is college bound, ACT, that's what's first on your mind. You're looking at ACT preps, you're looking at ACT classes, ACT practice, that's the name of the game once we get into high school. Now, you still want to learn all the other subjects, but ACT is a very important piece of your puzzle, okay? So check into that and don't forget that that needs to be prepared for. I have homeschooled in all three categories, uh, little to free category, medium, and we have spent the big bucks on the shiny box curriculum. What works best? They all did. They worked the best for us during that period of our life and where we were. Um, when we had little money, it got I got creative and we made it happen. They were little and so we were able to do what we needed to do. The expensive box curriculum was really for my sanity and that was exactly what we needed and what we needed to invest in for that period of time. And now we've kind of moved away back into the middle somewhere. Um, we don't spend a ton, but we do spend money on curriculum. So one more thing, I almost forgot, co-ops. Co-ops can be a great investment and sometimes they can even be free. You can find some other families in your area and get together and teach to your strengths. I used to teach art class at our co-op because the other mamas Oh my gosh, they couldn't handle the paint, the glitter, the markers. They didn't want to fool with any of that. That's right up my alley. I love it and the kids love it. And so that was a safe place for them to explore their creativity and without the stress of mama worried about her kitchen table, okay? So check into co-ops, those can be a very valuable resource. And that also is where you can find even some of your curriculum. Our co-op has a table that each family can come and place items on, they're free. Just take some, leave some, whatever you want. So you may find something like that as well. Whatever your budget is, you are giving them a specialized one-on-one -on -one tutor, the best one, the one who loves them the most, the one who cares the most. That is an amazing resource that you have right there, the willingness to do it. Don't underestimate that, that's important. Um, other stuff that you need for homeschooling, pencils, yes. Get the Ticonder Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga, that's it. Um, funny name, Serious Pencil, that should be their logo, I think. 
Anyway, you've seen them. They sharpen beautifully. They erase beautifully. It's worth the extra couple of cents. Do not use the ones with the plastic wrap that look really cute and have all the little doodads like for Christmas and the different holidays on them. They're going to create way more grief in your day. Throw them away. Use the, use the good pencils. Unless you can't afford to, then, then use the other ones. It's fine. Um, Pens, you need some pens, not a whole bunch of them, just any old pen will do. One that has uh, some marketing on the side that you picked up at the dentist office, maybe just, just any pen will work, fine. Maybe some binders, a couple of notebooks if the kids are older, um, pack of crayons. You get to choose your own supply list. How great is that? You don't have to spend your whole afternoon looking for a red three subject notebook you get to decide how many subjects and what color it is. And maybe it has a kitten with rainbows on it. Who knows? I don't know. But you figure out what you need for your supply list. And I promise it's going to be way less than what those other standard school lists are for the classrooms. At the end of summer is when I stock up on some items like glue sticks or Elmer's glue or maybe markers. And I will stash some things away because they are on sale and they are super cheap and they're selling them at the grocery store or at Staples or at Office Depot or at the office stores. They all have a deal or a sale on them. So I do stock up for the whole year during that time. Um, I don't necessarily buy all of our school supplies then, but the ones that are just too good to pass up and they're selling glue sticks for a quarter, I grab a box of them. Um, what could I not live without? Well, we already discussed my laminator. Um, my computer and printer has been very valuable for me to use as resources for our homeschooling. And I guess the other item would be my three hole punch. I do use that all the time. Could I live without it? Yes, but it's really nice to have. So maybe put that on your wish list. And even if you didn't have a computer or if you don't have a printer, then you can get access uh, to one. You can use your library. The library usually um, allows printing for, I don't know, a small fee per page or something like that. So if it's something you have to print, you can run to the library and get that done. If it's a large print, um, if you say, if you, uh, if you purchased a large PDF that had a bunch of pages, like 50 or more, or maybe 30 or more, then the UPS store or office supply stores, they might have like bulk pricing where it's 50 pages for so-and-so dollars, as opposed to 10 cents or 20 cents per page. You might find a better deal that way. Well, that's lots of tips and things to talk about budget and homeschooling. I hope that what you take away from this, if you are still with me here at the end of this video, and I'm about to run out of my lighting here, I hope what you take from this is you can do this. And it doesn't matter what you have to use for your resources, that there are things out there that are available that you can use and you can do this, I promise. Okay, I will be your biggest cheerleader. You can do it. It's going to be great. Everything's going to be awesome and your student is going to be better for it. Okay, I'm running out of light, so I will see y'all next time and bye-bye.